hello guys you are welcome back for another video so this is the drape video i made for this dress a subscriber actually sent me this and please if i have not attended to a request please be patient i really have a lot of requests on my on my list i will actually attend to yours so let's get started i will be using this um, maroon um, fabric to illustrate because i'm using a white fabric and my marker is white so it will not be visible so i have exactly what i have on the white on the maroon as well 16 inches by 16 inches that's the width and length of this fabric i am actually using a dull face satin a dull face satin and the white one is two piece so the maroon one is just a lining that i'll be using to illustrate like i said i have this two piece of white um, dull face so i'll fold it into um into four like we normally do for our circle i'll fold it into four I'll fold the lining as well. The pointy edges, um, the place that does not have opening, I'll match the two sides together. So we are actually going to for, um, cut out a circle like we normally do for our circle. So from that pointy edge, I'll measure 8 inches. So 8 inches into 2 is 16 inches. That was why we cut 16 inches. So if you want a bigger length, like the one on my thumb there is about 22 inches. So 22 inches, when you fold it over, is 11 inches that we will measure. So I'll just cut it out. I just marked 8 inches all around. I made I made a smaller one. If you want a bigger one, like the one on the thumbnail, anything 20 to 25 inches is okay. But I think that one is 22 inches or just a bit above that. So I've cut it out and I've removed my pin. So this is how it will look. As you can see, it is a circle, the normal circle that we know. When I open up, you can see that crease line. I used my iron to form it, that crease line. Those four lines um, that you are seeing, seeing at that point. Uh -huh. So I will locate the center point. The uh, My iron has helped me to mark the crease line. From the center point, on the crease line at the upper part, I will divide it into three. I will take one third of it, one of it, I will, I will just fold my measurement over like this to divide it into three. Or you can use your calculator, but if you don't want to uh, do um, calculations, you can just fold it into three. And you, with one value of what you folded, I will mark it at the top. And on the second crease line, I will mark the same value. So for the one I marked at the top, I will connect it into a straight line and cut it out. So this will be cut off. So I'm just repositioning my pin so that it will hold the one under. So from that midpoint, I will record exactly, I will mark exactly what I, I just marked at the other crease line and I'll connect it into a straight line. So at the other crease line, from the right, I will just mark from the pointy edge to the other crease line, and it will be at an angle 90 to the top of um, the first one I cut out. So I will locate the midpoint of this mark I made at um, the crease line just to help me get my curve. I just want to make a curve. So I'll come down by one inch from the midpoint. This is a guide for me to get a curve. So this pattern, we want to get um, this uh, point as, should I say, an inverted uh, or a flipped J. This is not an L, but it's a J that is flipped or mirrored to the other side. <laughs> like I, uh, that's the best I can describe it. So I will just mark it straight. Even if you are not understanding what I'm saying, I believe you can see me. Please just watch carefully. So from that point, I will cut it out. I will cut it out from the point. All the lines I marked, I will cut it out. But I will not cut the straight line after the uh, flipped J that I marked. So just watch what I'm, I am doing. I will cut through to that curved part. And I will take that point off. So I'm taking the point off. So as you can see, this is what I cut out from it. So 
that place is open and i will take off the other one as well so at that point that straight part you can make it slimmer because we will actually be gathering this to reduce bulkiness while gathering it or pleating it you can reduce half an inch and connect it straight back to those lines i made the first uh, straight line i marked and cut it out but i'll just be leaving it so that you will see the difference so this is what i will end up doing I will not cut it out but you can cut it out it is advisable if you want but you can still go and um, ahead and do the one i did so i'll go ahead and sew with half an inch all around but i'll be leaving an opening of about 1.5 inches you can leave an opening of one inch depending on how um, big your thumb is so that it will be able to go through the opening to turn it out i will make my stitches all around all around and i, will, I left an opening of 1.5 inches on the straight part so remember i'm using this maroon as a template so i will remove it and actually go and make my stitches on the white pattern on my white door face so i'll pin it and the way i just marked on the my template is the way i'm going to sew it so i've made my stitches and i used a, a contrasting thread so that you will see what i did so i'll clip all the pointy edges and make my notches all around if you are sewing yours please use a matching thread this is just for a tutorial purpose so i'll make my notches all around so that when i turn inside out and iron it will relax properly So I've made my notches and from that 1.5 inches opening, I will turn it inside out. I made my stitches with quarter of an inch. You can make half an inch stitching, but I just made quarter of an inch with my stitching. So I'll turn it inside out and bring out all the sharp points that I made my stitches on with my scissors you have to be careful so that you do not poke the fabric at this point so i just brought out all the edges and i'll go to my ironing board and iron it so that it lays very flat so after ironing i came up with this and as you can see i still have my opening you can use a hemming gum to seal it up you can tack it with a needle you can sew with your machine just any one you want you can even leave it because we'll be actually be gathering that edge but i would take to my machine and i'll sew i've made my stitches a very tiny stitch stitch to close that place and we are good to go so we'll now form our pleats or our gathers so with our template i'll show you what to do this is our template on that straight line and on the curvy line is where our pleat is going to go through so i will gather for you can use gather or pleats it's just the same thing so from there i will gather straight to the top I'll gather from the curved part from the curved part straight to the curve so i believe you can see what i am doing so you can you can fold it over you can drape it that's why it's called a draped bow you can fold it over, pleat it to see how it will look like. So I will take my gathering to the top. I'm just marking my line as a guide. This is a white chalk. You will not actually see it. And that was why I used a template that will be visible for you to see. So when you arrange the down parts, you, while you are um, making your gathers, please be arranging it so that at the end, the outcome will be fine. So we'll be gathering that top, but before then, if you are not using um a belt buckle, please gather that top and use your fabric and close it the way we do our bow. But I'll be using a belt buckle. So I'll first of all secure my knot, secure my gathers so that it doesn't loosen. I will pass the needle through once again and secure my gathers before I'll pass it through my belt buckle. I, I believe this is called a belt buckle, right? <laughs> that that is what I call it. Maybe <laughs> if you have another name for it, um, please share with me on the comment section. So 
so after that i will take it and pass it through it and um i will just arrange it just arrange it make sure you that it, it comes out the whole fabric will not, will not fit in perfectly there will be squeezes at the middle because as you can see i'm using a smaller one if you are using a bigger one that's if you are using a bigger fabric a bigger width and length you actually need a bigger one so when i pass it through i'll fold over the top one that straight one over and i will tack with that needle that is there. you notice i did not cut my needle if you are not using this um belt buckle like i said just make um a fabric and use it to close it or even a trimming close fold over and close it so reason why you, i said you can reduce why we are drafting you can reduce um, the tip by half an half half inch so that it becomes slip, uh, slimmer or thinner is because of this so that what you will gather to that back will not be much but mine it, it wasn't a problem actually so i would say bring my fabric and i will attack attach it to the point i want i've actually made like about three of these so um it was not a problem making this i don't know if you've made this style if you have and you have any other um if you have the easiest part please i would like to see so this is how it looks like what do you think about it this is the three of them this is what i've been able to come up with thank you this is actually beautiful thank you for watching up to this point and i hope you will give it a try this is called a draped bowl draped yes a draped bowl and um, it's actually a subscriber's request thank you for watching like i said and please hit on the subscribe button remember to turn on your notification bell that your bell icon so that each time i upload a new video it will be quite interesting that you want to learn or see my own method of sewing thank you and see you in my next videos bye